Okay. Hey, what a, what a great looking bunch this morning. Good job. Thanks for being here. You guys having a great start to your morning? Isn't this the best place to be? I'm Pastor Andy. I'm the counseling pastor here and uh, handle a lot of things. Um, uh, announcements is one of them and jokes is another. <laughs> uh, how did the hipster burn his tongue? He drank his coffee before it was cool. All right, maybe it's too early for that one. <laughs> oh, here's one. Here's one. Uh, what state has the smallest soda? Absolutely, Minnesota. Give yourselves a hand. Uh, if you're visiting with us for the first time this morning, welcome. Hopefully, when you came in, uh, you went past our welcome table and you saw all kinds of stuff there. There are QR codes that you can scan, and that pops, pops open um, all kinds of, of things uh, in our church, uh, things to know about our church, and also a visitor card that you can fill out, and uh, we would appreciate it if you would, would do that and fill that out um, so that we can stay connected with you. Also, let Chelsea or I know, um, if you're visiting with us this morning, we'd love to give you a gift um, for visiting. And um, we don't pass a plate here. We do offering boxes. You'll find offering boxes out there. And uh, we just, we love cheerful givers. So feel free to utilize those offering boxes. And sometimes people choose to, to, uh, to give online. And we have an online giving platform. And you can go to uh, lwf.churchcenter.com backslash giving and find out about that. Most things about our church you can find out when you scan those QR codes. Um, also, there's a, a counseling resource um, area right there where you can pick up some pamphlets and you can scan codes about a uh, counseling conference, which we're going to have uh, uh, later on, um, uh, at, well, actually at the first of the year, and also um, uh, just uh, things about our counseling ministry. Um, if you're in need of counseling um, or you have questions, you can scan those codes and find out more about that. Um, LWF Fall Fest has been moved um, just uh, in anticipation of maybe the weather coming in. And it's going to be um, November 1st. Nove November 1st, it'll be at Pearson's property in Carlisle. Also, November 15th and the 22nd, we're going to have Giving Sundays. There's going to be no praise banquet this year. Um, we'll be taking up a special harvest offering that's going to go towards renovation fund uh, for our church building. And a portion of that offering will also go towards church planning and missions. We're excited about that. And Saturday seminar, that's going to be October 31st. That's with Pastor Chad and myself. Um, that's going to be held at uh, our new offices at 810 East Park um, at 9 a.m. The topic for uh this coming week's uh, Saturday seminar is, um, is uh, I just went blank. Oh, it's going to be conflict resolution. Sorry, that happens every now and then. Uh, conflict resolution, peacemaking and conflict resolution. And uh, we really want you guys to, there's no charge for that. We've been doing these Saturday seminars, and we are really enjoying doing it when we can remember the topics that we're going to do. Uh, <laughs> uh, and uh, uh, let's see. I think that's it. I think that's it for announcements. We're just thankful that you're here. Thanks for being here this morning. We love being together, and we love singing praises to Jesus and hearing his word preached. And uh, if you have any questions about how we roll, um, about what happens with the service, um, all those things, we'd love to talk to you, and uh, we look forward to visiting with you in the lobby after the service. Let's pray, and then we'll enjoy the rest of our service this morning, okay? Father God, thanks for the morning. And uh, thanks for bringing us here, God. Thanks for the work that you're doing in our life. God, we wouldn't be here unless you prompted us to be here. We believe that. And so, God, we believe that you have great things in store for us this morning. Thanks for doing the work that only you can do in our lives, God. And we turn the remainder of our service over to you and pray that you would be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please stand with us again. Uh, the next next song is uh, Whom Shall I Fear? And uh, after last night, I found out that I fear Ruben's brother when he's wearing a clown mask at the Scary Barn event. 
Uh, never been to anything like that, but my wife and I got a chance to be some of the scares, but Reuben says, well, you guys have to go through it first, and I'm screaming like a little girl. So the good thing is, in life, though, um, not everything's a scary bar, <laughs> but there are things that sometimes we fear along the way, but with God uh, by our side, the God of angel army, armies, we do not have to fear. <clears throat>
may be seated. Good morning. Uh, this morning's reading is going to be in Hebrews 11, 1 through 16. It's uh, kind of a long one here. It says, Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. For by it the people of old received their commendation. By faith we understand that the universe was created by the word of God, 
so that what is seen was not made out of things that are visible. By faith, Abel offered to God a more acceptable sacrifice than Cain, through which he was commended as righteous, God commended, commending him by accepting his gifts. And through his faith, though he died, he still speaks. By faith, Enoch was taken up so that he should not see death, and he was not found because God had not taken him. Or God had taken him, I'm sorry. Now before he was taken, he was commended as having pleased God. And without faith, it is impossible to please him. For whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. By faith, Noah, being warned by God concerning events as yet unseen, in reverent fear constructed an ark for the saving of his household. By this, he condemned the world and became an heir of the righteousness that comes by faith. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to a place that he was to receive as an inheritance. As he went out, not knowing where he was going. By faith, he went to live in the land of promise, as in a foreign land, living in tents with Isaac and Jacob, heirs with him of the same promise. For he was looking forward to the city that has foundations, whose designer and builder is God. By faith, Sarah herself received power to conceive, even when she was past the age, since she considered him faithful who had promised. Therefore, from one man, and him as good as dead, were born descendants as many as the stars of heaven and as many as the innumerable grains of sand by the seashore. These all died in faith, not having received the things promised, but having seen them and greeted them from afar, and having acknowledged that they were strangers and exiles on the earth. For people who speak thus make it clear that they are seeking a homeland. If they had been thinking of the land from which they had gone out, they would have had, they would have had opportunity to return. But as it is, they desire a better country, that is, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared for them a city. Amen. Hey, let's uh, give thanks to God and thanks to Rich for reading the word this morning. Thank you, brother. Good morning. Good to see all of you guys here. Um, also, keep your hands warm. Let's uh, put our hands together for, wait for it, our, our youth group leaders. Um, we had a, an amazing Scary Barn event last night. I think 105, 110 youth kids all out at the Pearson's house um, having fun here in the gospel. So let's give it up for our youth leaders. They did a great job last night. So great to see all of you guys here. Great passage of scripture. I'm super excited for it. We also get to do communion this morning, which is a great blessing. Uh, so let's pray and ask God to bless his word. Father, thank you. You are so, so good to us. Thank you for giving us a, a church home. That is heated, amen, and uh, we thank you, God, for the opportunity to study Hebrews 11 this morning. God, we ask that your spirit would do a great work in us as we prepare our hearts for communion. God, may you prepare the hearts of every believer to receive and remember the blood of Christ and the body of Christ for us. Um, Lord, I pray for those who do not yet know Jesus as their Savior, Lord, that you would do a great work in their hearts, and Lord, help us to walk by faith. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So uh, the first slide is rules or emotion. Okay, rules or emotion. Um, it seems, like, and when I say emotions, I mean like emotional experience. And it seems that these are the only two options for Christian culture today. And what I mean by that is either you rigidly try to keep all the rules and you get every detail correct, and that's Christianity to you, keeping the rules. Or you go and search for churches until you find the right emotional experience. And it seems as if those are your only options in today's Christianity. You either be a legalist and a rule follower or you seek to find a church that makes you feel the right way. Um, I met with a guy the other day who didn't grow up in church, and uh, we were having coffee together, and he was telling me a story about how he, he didn't grow up in church, but his parents um, were getting a divorce, and he was a sophomore in high school. It was a very difficult time for him. And so he latched on to a, um, a Christian youth group, and this youth group uh, provided him emotional 
stability and friendship. And he was very thankful for that. He said, you know, Pastor, I, 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 I knew nothing about Christianity, but what I did, I walked into this youth group and I got emotional support. And it was very helpful for me at that time. Okay, in the midst of that, the youth group uh, would have gatherings. And he said, I, I would go into these youth group gatherings and I would come out with more questions than I got answers. He's like, I was thankful for the emotional engagement, but I had real questions about Christianity and, and Jesus and whether he was even real, and I came out with a lot more questions than answers. Um, the youth group did a trip. They hiked to a mountain, and uh, they, had, they did this mountain hiking trip, and you were supposed to hike up onto this top uh, peak of a mountain, and you were supposed to sit once you got to the top of the mountain, and listen in silence for God. And so he said, so pastor, I, I hike the mountain. I'm going through all these things with my family and my, my life. I sit on top of the mountain, and I listen for God, and I didn't hear anything. And I said, well, that, that's too bad. Um, here's the deal. If you listen to this guy's story, and I told this guy, your mountaintop experience has more to do with Hinduism than it does Christianity. And here's the reason why. Here, here's what concerns me. So it goes these days. Rare is the church who engages the mind and the emotions. Amen? Rare is the church where you think about the gospel deeply and then you feel it subsequently. Um. That's the type of church we're trying to be. We're trying to be a church that challenges your brain, pushes you in the area of reason, and, and gives you a reasonable faith that you can believe in, but also engages the emotions as well. So understand, walking by faith, when you talk about walking by faith in your own life, it involves the mind and the emotions. You've got to have both. So when we seek uh, the truth of the gospel, we do so by seeking the mind to change first. After all, Jesus did say, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. You know, The word repent, if you didn't know, means change your mind. Jesus came for your mind. He came to change the way you think. And you might say, well, what does that mean? Change what? Change everything about how you think. Jesus is after every corner of your brain. Praise God. You are to repent in, up here. And then, as you engage in your mind, the emotions come second. They follow. Um, I've often said in the counseling room, emotions make great followers and terrible leaders. Can I get an amen? You live by your emotions, it's a wild and crazy ride, and you don't know where you're going next. You live by your thinking, and you let God change your mind. Your emotions make good followers. Um, Hebrews 11 is one of the strongest and best chapters in the scripture. It's one of the best chapters in all the Bible. Hebrews 11 is called the Hall of Fame for faith. Okay, And uh, we have Abel and Enoch and Noah and Abraham and Sarah in the first 16 verses of, of Hebrews 11. But it's like the NFL Hall of Fame. I'll put up the, the photo here. This is the NFL Hall of Fame. All right, This is, the, this is Canton, Ohio. And if you were going to go, this is American football, B-song. American football, not football, okay? And uh, in, in Canton, Ohio, you know, you can go there. And what do you go there for? You go there to learn about all the great heroes of American football. And inside of this building, there are literally statues or busts of, of guys' heads and you walk around and you see all these heads, these statue heads of all these great players of the past. And what's the point? The point is to, is to see these are the heroes, the historical heroes of this game. Okay? Got the Hall of Fame in your mind? Hebrews 11 is the Hall of Fame for faith. And I would say this, as you read through the names in Hebrews 11, you're going to find men and women who have walked with God by faith. And if you're a Christian here this morning, some of you need to get some heroes in your life. I mean real heroes. Some of these individuals need to be your heroes. 
And I'm encouraging you, as you read Hebrews 11, to grab on. So verse 1 through 16, it lists five heroes of the faith, like I said. Abel, Enoch, Noah, Abraham, and Sarah. Four men and one woman. And I'm not really going to tell their stories because it would take too long and we have to get to communion and I need to, I need to cinch up this message into a, a really solid core, which is defining faith. So we're not going to get into their stories, but I want to tell you what they did real quick. Abel offered an acceptable sacrifice to God by faith. Praise the Lord. All right, that's why he's in there. Enoch walked with God. And God took him. Enoch didn't even experience death. God took him up into heaven, and he walked closely with the Lord. Noah built a big, huge boat, of which you can go see in Kentucky. (laughs) And Abraham and Sarah, they had an impossible kid. They had a child at an impossible age, and uh, that's their story. Today... There seems to be a lot of confusion about what it means to walk by faith. People of faith are not perfect. Hear me when I say this. Enoch, Abel, Abraham, Sarah, these guys, they're not perfect people. If you walk by faith, you are not a perfect person. All right? People of faith are not perfect. What are they? Only Jesus was perfect. People of faith are the people who hold on to God's promises with a firm and tight grip, and they keep walking by faith in God. That's what people of faith do. They hold on, they grip tight, and they keep going, even when it gets hard. So the main idea this morning in this passage is that people of faith, hopefully that's you, you must know what faith is. That's important. You got to know what faith is. If you're going to walk by faith, you might want to know what faith is and how to walk by faith. So there's um, going to be three essentials that I'm going to lay out for you this morning. Three essentials for walking by faith. I think the text ex- clearly says it. Um, the reality of faith, the requirement of faith, and then the reward of faith. So let's start with essential number one is the reality of faith. Verse one. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. The reality of faith is to be understood, number one, for the Hebrew Christians who are receiving this letter, number two, for you and me. Like, if you're going to walk by faith, it's good to know what it is. So the word faith in verse one, it literally means conviction about the truth. Right? It means to have conviction of belief. Um, another way to say it is to have deep conviction. If you have deep conviction about something, you have faith, okay, in that thing, whatever that is. Um, it, another word is trust. Whatever you just trust, whatever you trust inherently without thinking, that is faith. Faith is the assurance or the confidence of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. If you're going to have faith, you have to have a conviction about things unseen. Things you can't see. Right? Beyond the material world. That's what you have to believe. You have to have an inherent trust in the divine to be walking by faith. So biblical faith is the conviction of consistently trusting God and his promises. Okay, so you look at God, you look at his promises, and you believe them. You trust them. That's what it means to walk by faith. Now, faith is not an invention of man. Faith is not something you just invent. Faith is not something you're like, yeah, I think I'm going to walk by faith today. I'm going to invent faith. Faith is a response to a God who initiates with man. Okay, faith is always a response to God. Faith is not something you whisk out of thin air. It's God showing up in your life and you responding to him. How do I know that? Because the Bible tells me so, okay? Uh, Abel, Enoch, Abraham, Sarah, Noah. God shows up in their life first. And they respond to God by faith. If you want to be a faith walker this morning, God has to show up in your life first. Because God is the author of faith. And you simply respond to that faith. Um, consider this verse, 1 John 4.10. In this is love. 
not that we loved God, but that he loved us first and gave his son up for us. If you're a great man or woman of faith, you didn't start that. Amen? If you're a great man or woman of faith, God started it in you, and you are now responding by faith. Praise God. Uh, Biblical faith is also not about the amount of faith that you have. Okay, you're going to hear false teachers in this country say it, it, it matters how much faith you have. If you have a little bit more faith, you can walk with Jesus. If you have a little bit more faith, your bank account is going to go up, up, up. If you just have a little bit more faith, you will be able to walk with God. Okay, that's false teaching. That is a false gospel. All right, um, there's a story of a farmer who had cancer. All right, we're going to put this picture up. This is not the farming couple, but um, it, it illustrates what I'm talking about. There's a story of a farmer who had cancer. And the wife was told, um, and the family was told, if you, if you have enough faith, farmer, you can be healed of your cancer. And so um, there was a charismatic church in my area who began to pray. We believe. We have enough faith. They started getting small groups of people together together bigger groups of people. The church started praying, and everybody prayed for the farmer to be healed. And if you just have enough faith, you can be healed. And I was involved in one of these prayer meetings for the healing of the farmer. And everybody was praying and passionate, and if we just have more faith, more faith, the farmer died. Because it wasn't God's plan for the farmer to be healed. And the approach that was made to the farmer's wife went something like this. We're really sad. This is a really sorry situation that you are in. If you would have just had a little more faith, your husband would still be alive. That is garbage. That is absolute garbage. Because faith is not the amount of faith that you had. Jesus said if you have faith like a mustard seed, right? It's not the amount of faith. It's who you put your faith in. Can I get a witness? Faith is about who you put your faith in, not the amount of faith you have. It's what you're trusting in. It's who you're trusting in and who you're believing in. Biblical faith is a reality in our lives because we see God, we believe in God, and we we lay hold of his promises. And whatever God does with us, that's up to God, not us. So, Biblical faith is all about this reality. The reality of conviction in your soul. If you're going to walk by faith this morning, you've got to know what faith is. It's reality. Essential number two is the requirement of faith. And this is in verse 6. It says, And without faith it is impossible to please him, for whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists. So the requirement of faith is that you can't Please God without faith. It is impossible to please God without faith. Okay? Um, it's, it's a 100% word here. It's impossible. It's not um, difficult. You know, it's really difficult to please God if you don't have faith. It's not improbable. It's really improbable to please God if you don't have faith. But there is that one time, you know, that you didn't have faith and it still pleased God. It's not uh, the word tough. It's tough to please God, you know, without faith. It's, the word is impossible, which means without strength, powerless, unable, impossible. You cannot please God without faith. Christian, just think about that for a moment. You can't please God today if you don't have faith. You literally can't. If you walk in unbelief and doubt and cynicism today, you cannot please God. That's big time. You can't please God. Well, what does the word please mean? What does it mean to please God? The word there means to be well-pleasing, to give pleasure, to gratify. You can't gratify and give God pleasure unless you walk by faith. Um, And that's who gets commendation, right? Verse 2 for by it, the people of old received their condem- or commendation, their testimony. 
God gave them an attaboy. The people who walk by faith please God and they get commendation from God. They get an attaboy from God. If you walk by faith in God, you get an attaboy or an girl this morning. Amen? That's good. Um, God only gives his commendation to those who walk by faith. Um, there's a picture here that I want to show you of a coach with his athlete. Okay, this is Greg McDermott. He's the coach of Creighton, a college basketball team. This is his son, Doug, who played for Creighton. He now plays in the NBA. But this is an embrace that they're having as a father and a son at the end of Doug's playing career because he got to play for his dad, which is a pretty amazing thing. So you're seeing a couple things here, right? You're seeing a father and a son connecting intimately, joyfully, publicly, because there's that, that is an attaboy hug. Don't you agree? See, that's an affirmation. That's a commendation. You're also seeing a coach and an athlete, which is probably one of the most powerful connections in our society today is that of an athlete and a coach, and a coach and an athlete, because there's love there. And, and as an athlete, the one thing you live for more than anything else, more than the wins and the losses and all the stuff, is you live for the commendation, the hug of your coach. That's what you live for. And there's nothing more powerful than when you get it. You get an attaboy or an girl from your coach. And vice versa, there's nothing more beautiful when a coach can do that for an athlete. Can I just tell you that that scene is way opposite of Scary Barn last night. Scary Barn last night, there were no attaboys. There were no girls last night coming through the barn. There was, I'm going to punch you in the face because I'm scared moments. But there was no physical touching like of the scarers to the kids, which is a great rule. But I'm telling you, there was no like comforting hugs in the scary barn. Not one. Because that's not what the scary barn is. What a coach and an athlete have is commendation. And if you walk by faith, I mean, what are you walking by faith for? For God's commendation in your life. If you walk with Jesus, what are you walking with Jesus for other than to hear on that final day, well done, good and faithful servant. I'm I'm asking Jesus for a hug. I don't know about y'all. I'm asking him for a hug. I want an embrace. And I believe that we're going to get that. I believe that. But that's a requirement of faith. You have to live by faith because that's the only way God gives out his commendation. Secondly, the requirement of faith is you have to come to God as he is, right? You have to believe that he is. You have to come to him as he is. Verse 6, without faith it's impossible to please him. For whoever would draw near to God must believe that he is or that he exists. All right, the word exists means it's a me in the Greek. It means just he is. He is the supreme God. You have to come to God as he is. Walking by faith comes, requires coming to God on his terms, not your terms. Do you guys hear me? Coming to God by faith means you come to him on his terms, not on your terms. God doesn't bow or bend his character or his personhood to you. So walking by faith means I, at some point I see God awesome in power, awesome in glory. I see billions of galaxies and I see a God who spoke billions of galaxies with a word of his power. And I come to him by faith, not fighting him. I'm not going to fight him. Our culture is full of brawlers. We love to fight with our image of who we think God is. And that's not faith. That's unbelief. That's criticism. That's cynicism. And our culture is rife with that. Coming to God by faith means I come to him and I receive him and I accept him simply as he is. Anything less of that is idolatry. It's I've created a God of my own image. That's essential number two is requirement. If you're going to come to God, you are required to come to him as he is. Essential number three is the reward of faith. So we've had the requirement of faith. Now we have the reward of faith, verse 6 at the end. It says, It is impossible to please God, for whoever would draw near to him must believe he exists and that he rewards 
those who seek him. If you're going to walk by faith, you have to understand the reward of faith. You have to walk and expect blessings from God. Faith walkers expect blessing from God. They expect rewards. All right, And there's no other way to say it. The reward of faith is Jesus. Jesus in your heart, Jesus in your life, and all the blessings that flow into your life through him. If you're going to walk in biblical faith, you expect a reward from God. Now that sounds really weird. It sounds like you are just a kid after Halloween candy, doesn't it? It sounds like you just want candy. Just give me candy, God. That's why I follow you. Give me candy. Right? It sounds weird. But those who walk in biblical faith, you must expect a reward from God. Because God, literally, it, that, that idea of reward in verse 6, it literally means a rewarder or a remunerator. That's literally what it means, that God will remunerate your faith, which means that God is generous. He's ready to reward you as you walk by faith in him. And let's get one thing cl- clear. The reward of faith is not money. Okay? For all of you people that are thinking, well, if I just follow God and I'll get finances, I'll get financial blessing. If I follow God, he'll give me money. If I follow God, he'll make me, he'll make me all these things. Listen, I'm not saying that. Faith for financial blessing is false teaching. It's a false gospel. God never proclaims to you that if you follow him by faith, you're going to be rich. That is called the health, wealth, prosperity gospel. It is a false gospel. It is false teaching. If you're reading a book or watching a show and they say, hey, follow Jesus, he'll give you lots of money, run away. Just absolutely run away. Because money is not the reward of faith. Forgiveness of sins is the reward of faith. Intimate fellowship with Jesus and a clean conscience in your life is the reward of faith. Rich relationships are the reward of God. God's presence in your life is his reward. These are riches untold. Um, Consider these verses as we close. Delight yourself in the Lord. And he will give you the desires of your heart. Psalm 37 verse 4. Think about Psalm 16 verse 11. In your presence, God, is fullness of joy. And at your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Think about this verse, Psalm 23. Many of you know it. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. And I'll dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Consider Jesus and what he said in John 17, verse 3. He said, this is eternal life that they may know you, Father, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. The richest people in this room are the ones who walk by faith in Jesus Christ and have been rewarded with the presence of God in their hearts. If you have Christ in your heart, you are the richest person here. If you have the promises of Almighty God and the promise of heaven forever and ever and ever, you have everything you ever need. If you're going to walk by faith, you've got to believe that God will reward you for your faith. Don't give up. Keep believing the promises of God. Seek the Lord. And as we go into communion, these are the essentials. The reality of faith, the requirement of faith, and the reward of faith. Do you have faith this morning? That's my question. Do you have faith? Because if you do have faith, is it biblical? Is it biblical faith? Do you know the reality of faith? Do you know the, 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 the requirement of faith and the reward of faith? If you're a Christian here, we're going to communion. Wow, what a great time. Evaluate our hearts. Say thank you to Jesus for dying on the cross for our sins and rising, rising again from the dead. Christian, this is your moment to enjoy the presence of God. And if you don't know Christ yet, You can let the elements pass by you, you know, when they come to you. Because deep down, you know you're not saved. You know you're not quite connected to Jesus by faith. This is a great morning to get saved. So I'm going to pray. 
You're going to have about 10 minutes just to, just to meditate and think about these truths. Um, our deacons will be coming around with the communion elements. If you are a Christian, you are welcome to participate. You can grab the elements from them. Um, if you're not a Christian, we would encourage you not to, to participate. Just let the elements pass by you. And what we will do is we will uh, participate together at the end, okay? This is a very precious time. Communion is my favorite. It's my favorite time. So let's, let's use this time to connect with the Lord. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the reality of faith. Lord, faith is believing in your promises, who you are. And Lord, we are here this morning because you promised to a guy named Abraham thousands of years ago that you would bless all the world through him. And here we are. And God, I pray that every person here might know the blessing of walking by faith in Jesus Christ. And I pray that you would be in the heart of every Christian as they reflect, maybe their sins to confess, maybe there is some things they just need to give to you right now, maybe they need to refresh their, their faith in you, Lord Jesus. I pray that this would be a very special time. And God, if there's anybody here that doesn't know Christ, Lord, may this be the morning that they humble themselves, repent for the first time, and believe. Guide our communion time in Jesus' name. Amen.
the Apostle Paul said this in 1 Corinthians 11, For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it, and he said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Praise God. You guys can all stand up. I asked uh, Brandon and Chris to come up, and uh, we're going to sing the doxology, which is becoming our tradition. That's a good one. Amen a good one. So we're going to um, sing the doxology together, so sing it with us as we, as we close. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Let's sing it again. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Praise God. We love you guys. Thanks for being out here today. You're dismissed.